Framer is one of my new favorite tools for designing and launching websites without having to write a single line of code. And a lot of people are switching over to Framer. And maybe you're one of those people that are interested in it, but you haven't spent the time and actually learned the tool. Well, this video is for you. It's a complete crash course into Framer where I'm going to teach you how to prep your design file inside of Figma, how to create site styles, build the site out by yourself, not using any sort of templates or any sort of resources. And then you're going to use things like computer components and responsive breakpoints to launch an entire website. All right, I'm here inside of Figma and I have a website design that's already created. This is a template you can actually find for free inside of the Framer community. And I've just redesigned it so we have all the assets here. It's a really beautiful template. And we're gonna do the large majority of this project today, but I don't have any interactions or hovers over my button. I don't want to do that right now. I'm going to do all of that in Framer because it's very simple to set up. And why would I spend all the time prototyping a website here when I could just do it inside of Framer? And if it's approved, I can just publish and launch right there. So here we are inside of our Figma file. You can see all the different elements, all the different layers and everything. And my first step from here is to prep my Figma file. And so that is what I've done. What I'll usually do in my web design process is take my completed design and I'm going to yank out a couple of important things. Number one, all of the different typography styles that are used inside of my website. I'm going to grab those. And I'm going to lay those out here. Next, I'm going to grab all of the colors and all of the different image assets. We have logos that are ready to be exported as SVGs, large background images, large feature content images. And I've gone ahead and I've exported a bunch of these out and they're sitting here on my desktop ready to go for me to use. The next step is for me to jump over to Framer and start building my website. You can see I jumped over here to Framer. I have a blank project here with a immediate artboard here or canvas of 1200 pixels. That's where I'm gonna start building my website. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is get those site styles brought over so I don't have to worry about building them as I go. So to do that, I'm gonna just cheat really quickly. I'm gonna jump into my uh, Figma file here and I'm gonna grab things like my colors and my typography and i'm going to open up the figma to html with framer uh actually plug in and that immediately copied 12 layers and it's ready now to paste in framer i'm using the local version of framer i've just installed on my machine let's kick back over there and i'm sure enough just going to press command or control v i'm going to bring all of those those in and drag them off of my canvas now from here I can, you can see they've all been laid out in a stack, which a stack is very similar to an auto layout inside of Figma. I don't have to have that if I don't want it, but I do want to immediately start creating styles out of this content. So let's start with the color styles because those are really, really easy. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select this color. You see that color is showing up in my right hand uh, details panel. And I'm just going to click on that fill there. And you can see right down here, I can create a new site style. So why don't we just call this one? Uh, we're going to call this dark one. And what's really cool is we're not going to do that in this video, but you can create a dark mode and a light mode style. I'm just going to create one style. And if you want, you can actually kick your website back and forth between dark and light mode. But we have that. Let's go ahead and create that style. There it is. It shows up here in our panel as well as our assets panel. You can see that dark style that's there. Let's grab this second one and let's create a new color style out of it. Um, we will just take our picker this time and we'll call this one dark two and let's go ahead and create that site style. And this is my preferred method of creating all of your site styles is bringing things in. So, you know, selecting here in your styles, creating a new style and choosing which type of style you want. Later on, we're going to create all of our typography styles here, but let's just finish up with our different color styles. So I'm going to hit color style again, and we're going to do that. I'm going to call this one eel, like an electric eel, just like that. And we might as well create one more color style for our white color. And this one, I'm just going to call light one. And let's go ahead and save that. Now we have all of these color styles that are created. I can actually grab my artboard here and I can assign it a style simply by selecting the entire artboard or my page here. I'm going to open up that color and I'm going to select a style. Let's make it dark one. And there we have a actual color style that's being applied throughout my entire project. Now, if I was to change my dark color here, let's just grab this and remember that it's going to change everywhere that it's used. Let's just undo that. And we have our new 
color styles created. With that being done, I could actually delete all these squares. I don't need them anymore. I'm going to start grabbing my typography and I'm going to grab my headline here. Why don't we come over down in the right hand corner and hit styles here and I'm going to go ahead and create a new style and it's going to be my heading one out of that style. Boom, it's done just like that. Let's grab number two and before we do this, I'm just going to actually grab all of these elements and drag them outside of this frame or this stack. I don't need it like that. This is going to make it a little bit easier. I can start to grab elements, turn it into a new style. That's going to be my heading two and my a new style here as well. Let's make that our heading three. And now we actually have multiple versions of body text. We have a body normal or default. We also have a body large and a body small. So why don't we just create one of these? I'm going to grab the default first select this one a new style and I'm going to create a paragraph style you can actually have multiples and when I come down here to body I can call this one for instance uh, I can rename it sorry let me come up here and you can see that inside of my assets panel we have body there I'm going to right click and rename this body uh, I'm going to call that one body medium and that'll be kind of our default style that works I think and let's grab this next one and we'll call this one a new style. It's also going to be a paragraph and we're going to call this one, renaming it to body large. And let's do one more here, new style, paragraph style. And we'll call this one, renaming it to body small. And we can rearrange these, just drag these around. So now I have them ordered in a really nice way, my three headings and my three paragraph styles. Now that we've brought all of our site styles from Figma into Framer, it's time to start building our layout. One of the trickiest parts of most website layouts is the navigation. We do have this center line navigation with a logo on the left and a button on the right, and you can 100% build this from scratch inside a Framer or use that Framer plugin to copy and paste it inside. But I find one of the easiest ways to work on this is actually just to insert a pre-created navigation and do a little bit of editing. So I'm gonna jump up to the insert panel. I'm gonna go down the navigation. I'm gonna grab one of these dark navs, just click on it, and that's gonna pop it right inside. Now you'll notice, obviously, it doesn't look like our navigation. It's close, but it's not spot on by any means. But you'll also notice that it's highlighted in purple. That's because this is a component. I can double click on this and then go into the edit mode of the component. Just like in Figma, when I edit the master, it's going to edit every instance or update every instance of your component. This is really, really helpful. And I just need to do a few things here to make it look like our navigation. So I'm going to grab this logo SVG that we have here. And I'll just size it up a little bit. Why don't I just X that out? That's to cut it out. And I'm going to go into where that logo is stored on the right hand side. I'm going to paste it in. Let's try that one more time. Paste it right there. I don't need this version of it. And uh, before we do that, let's just zoom out and look. We have this responsive version of it that's been created. Why don't we just move this thing around and get rid of our old logo? We don't need that anymore. And you can see now that we have done that it's updated in our responsive navigation as well now this has a little bit of spacing on the left hand side I'm gonna kill that and you'll see why because next what we're gonna do is grab the entire nav which add a little bit of padding to the right and left hand side so uh, there is a little bit of padding let's just go let's go up a little bit more maybe like 24 something like that and right and left 24 pixels on each side, 12 and 12 on the top and bottom. Now we get a little bit of that space so it doesn't push all the way out to the edge of the browser. That would not be great. Uh, next thing we need is we need a button inside of that. But before we do that, why don't we just create a component that's a button and then we'll add it to our nav bar. That's going to be easy to do. Come back over to our main layout here and I'm just going to grab a piece of text here. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to write button let's try that one more time right button and this thing is stretching out it's a fixed width we don't need that so we're just going to move this to fit content and we're going to do the same thing for top and bottom fit the content and just like in figma i'd love to put it in an auto layout but here in framer we're going to add it into a stack so add stack just like that stacks are editable they are stylable uh, they scale responsively it's gonna be super awesome so why don't we actually take this background and make it our color just like so and we'll grab the text inside and we'll make that text our dark color oh we're starting to build a little bit of a button here aren't we so let's zoom in again it's pretty cramped right now we need to give it a little bit of space 
We're gonna do that with internal padding. I'll turn the padding to be separate on all sides and on the top and the bottom, I'll do like four and maybe I'll do four on the bottom and then we'll do something like, I don't know, let's do 14 on the left and right hand edge. Now it's editing in a really weird way. It's kind of shuffling it around inside and that's because what we want for our element is we want our stack not to be fixed either. We want that to fit the content and we want to fit the content. Look at that, we just built a nice button. And why don't we just round the edges here a little bit. I'll scroll down, I'll just grab the radius. I think we're at eight inside of Figma. That's perfect, that's our button. Why don't we turn that into a component? I'll rename this really quickly. The button, it's a key note that when you have something named, a layer named, and you go to turn it into a component, watch out, sorry. I just messed that up. You turn it into a component that it's going to reference your layer name. So why don't we create that into a button? And I know right off the bat that this button's gonna need a hover state and I know that there's a different variant in my design. There's that white variant in my design. So why don't we just create those variants right now in those hover states? So first thing I'll do is uh, I will create a variant by clicking on my button. I can see, just hover right here, create a new variant of this bad boy. And what is this button gonna be? It's gonna be my white button with the black text, perfect. And now when I click on any of these buttons, any of these buttons or variants, I now get a new hover option. So why don't we create a hover option? I don't need a pressed option right now, we'll just do hover. I would like white to transition over, excuse me, green to transition over to white. And I would like maybe the light button to transition over to black. Let's try this again, creating the hover and make sure that that one transitions over to black and that the text inside transitions over to white. Now we have two variants with each of them having a hover state. Here's my button. Why don't I just cut that out and jump back into my nav. I'll grab my entire nav and I'll paste that bad boy in. And look at that. We have a component inside of a component. We are nesting components, y'all. We're doing a really good job. Last thing we need to do is center this thing a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab this entire grouping. It is its own stack going from left to right. And instead of it having a fixed or fit, excuse me, width here to fit the content, I just want it to fill. Instead, when I do that, it's gonna shove both of those buttons and logos out to the far side and say, let me take up the majority of the space, which is exactly what we want. Our last step here is we're gonna grab the actual nav and we're gonna just change it to our color for our website. And look at that, in just a few moments here, we've created a fully customized and responsive. When we get there and add a new breakpoint, responsiveness is already baked in and we can go ahead and play our website right now we already have some interactivity for a button pretty cool stuff all right now that we've built the navigation it's kind of all downhill from here we just need to start laying out the majority of our content and adding in a few bells and whistles let's jump back into our project and when we look at our figma file here we have really just a bunch of different types of content. We have a little tag up here at the top that's using our smallest body copy. We got a big headline one, some more body copy, and some of those buttons we've already built, as well as big image, and we have a background image kind of behind that, kind of peeking. So what I like to do is work from the inside out. Let's put all of the guts, all of the content there, and then we'll start collecting it, grouping it, formatting it, and laying it out a little bit more effectively. So we know that we have a small piece of body copy inside i'm going to drag that and drop that and you'll notice that it just dragged right in and it snapped into place that's because my entire element here is set to a stack so it's going to stack everything from top to bottom that's perfect because when i create big sections of my website i can then create those sections like my hero section my value proposition section and i can just create them into big sections and they just stack on top of each other it's very easy to move them around edit them a really, really simple workflow. So we're gonna create our first big section here by dragging all the contents into that section. We also know that we had a headline there, we had uh, some body small, actually I think this is body regular, it's just named the wrong size there, so that's looking pretty good. What else did we have? Oh, we had some buttons. So why don't we go over to our assets panel, drag a button in, and we'll just really quickly grab that button, duplicate it and swap it over to our other variant down here in the right hand panel, because that's where all of your components and their variants and overrides for anything that you put on them start to live. Okay, so that starts to be it. I know we also have a big background image. So why don't we bring that background image somewhere here on our canvas so we can start working with it. 
And there's our background image. And I know we also have like a large product image. So we're gonna bring that thing in as well. Now we are all ready to go, all right? So why don't we grab each of these elements? I'm gonna bring my product image in. I'm gonna bring my big background image in. And boy, oh boy, did we make a massive mess, but don't worry. We're gonna fix it, I promise. So first thing we're gonna do is take our text here and why don't we just set it to fit the content and uh, we'll make sure that the text is set to center aligned. That's pretty good. And we actually need to turn this into a little bit of a chip here, just like a really simple thing, very similar to our button. So why don't I just zoom in really quickly and say uh, version 2.0 or whatever it said and we'll turn that into a stack again. So I'm just use the Hot key command there to turn it into a stack and we'll just rename this chip because I can definitely see this becoming a component for us to use later. All right, we're gonna build this chip. So let's give it a little bit of a background. Uh, let's see, we'll just drop down, add the fill to be uh, that darker or that lighter dark color, perfect like that. We're gonna add a little bit of padding on all sides. Let's do it again, something like, I don't know, four and we'll do 10, 12, yeah four and 12, I think looks good for this chip. And again, we need some radius. So let's just drop down and give this 360 degrees or 360 pixels of radius. That'll, should be able to handle anything we throw at it. And boom, just like that, we have this nice little chip that we are creating. So let's jump back up to the chip. That looks good. And uh, yeah, okay. So we just wanna make sure that we are setting everything to fit, fit the content and fit the content. Perfect, see how it just started to respect the padding? That's what we want. Let's turn into a component. Command Alt K for a component. Let's create that chip and there it is in case we ever need to mess with it. It is there for us. Now we have everything else. Let's just start to grab our text and we will pop that inside. Streamline the workflow. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit and let's make sure we center align our text. And uh, yeah, so far so good. Next we have this piece of text and the button say buy and get started. So let's do something like that inside. Just like that, we'll say, come down here and first thing we're gonna do is actually grab both of our buttons because they're kind of sitting funky. So I'm gonna put those in a stack and instead of top to bottom, I'm gonna switch it to a left to right stack and I'm just gonna make sure that it fits the content and that it it's the content, perfect. Everything's stacking just the way I want it. And you'll notice that when I click on each of these individual buttons, there's no place for me to edit anything. So like I can't edit the label that I've placed there. So why don't we come back in and just hit this edit component this time and we will head back into our button. And this time I'm gonna grab my text and the actual content here you'll notice has a little plus next to it. That allows us to create an editable element here or an override. So we're gonna create a variable that's plain text for it and we're just gonna call it label and the default is gonna say button. That's perfect, we've created it. Now we can come back really quickly and you'll notice when we click on it, look at this, we can click down here and say, buy me, just like that. And when we do that, it updates. And when you did it to your initial variant, it's gonna do it to all the rest of the variants. So this one will put the words learn more. It's spacing out perfectly just the way we want it. So far, so good. All right, now we've got all of our content inside of there. And all we had to do was basically create a new stack. So I grouped all the elements together, my buttons, my subheadline, my headline, and my tag. And I put them inside of a new stack. And I wanna rename this. I wanna call this something like container or wrapper, whatever you wanna call it, that's what I'm gonna call it because this containing element that I've created, it is set to 100% width, but I've given it a max width simply by pressing here and adding a max width to it. I've set that size constraint so that it never flows past 1200 pixels. Responsive web is great, but you don't want it to respond so much that it never ever stops growing. And you can see now that we have all the elements inside set to fill. What we're saying is, hey, all the guts, all the contents inside, Try to fill this whole container, but the container is gonna stop at 1200 pixels if it ever gets wider than that. When we press play on our prototype, you can see it's not getting any wider than 1200 pixels. And as we start to kind of like bring the size of our browser down, it's going to shrink the size of that. It's gonna kick it over and wrap it onto new lines, which is what we want. And it's pushing down the actual content underneath it. Everything has to respect the height 
of that content. And that's because we have this containing element that is going to fit all of the height. It's going to automatically fit all the height, so vertically, but then it has 100% on the left and right hand side on its width. Now, that's looking pretty good. And now we need probably a little bit of padding for this element around it because otherwise it's going to look a little bit funky. Um, so we could actually, we're having kind of some interesting stuff happening with our, our line here. Streamline your workflow. We could actually, if we want to, just do a hard line break here. So let's just do that. We're respecting that. All that looks pretty good. Now let's grab our container and add a little bit of that padding. So we're gonna do top of maybe 100 pixels, and then let's do a bottom of 100 pixels to match. That looks pretty close here. Um, let's just grab our chip here, and we have about 120 is the space in between. So we can go back and just bump that up to 120 and 120, and now we've kind of built out that section. Now, you can see I'm starting to push the content down, but my artboard here my actual website the browser is not pushing because it's set at a fixed height so we like a fixed width for these artboards because that's going to help us establish responsive breakpoints but when it comes to the height we want it to always contain all the elements so let's just move that from fixed to fit content you'll see how it just jumped down and you can see all the elements now we have this really cool background image we want that to be up behind all of our content here so why don't we just really quickly move that over from relative positioning to absolute positioning and we can grab it and start to move it around. So it's actually, you can see set to 970 something from the top. Let's just bring that up. I can manually grab this and drag and drop this around. I'm gonna put it right behind all of the contents there and I might actually even just center it and spread it out just a little bit more. I want it to maybe be a little bit bigger. Let's center that and drag it back down can't tell how it is inside of my design. You can see it's like just popping up into the text. That's probably what we want, just popping up into the text like that. And you can, get, you can kind of tell it's, it's in front right now, which we don't want. So we're actually gonna grab that element that's absolutely positioned. It's always gonna stay exactly where it's at. We're gonna just change one thing and that is the Z index. Z index is the ability for elements to move in 3D space towards you or away from you. And so by simply moving that, from one to zero and into negative one, it should pop up behind. Sorry for the crazy zoom. It should pop up behind. Try it one more time. Let's grab that image background and go to put it up and behind everything in there. There we go. So we just put it at the top of our container and then we set that to instead of one, so it's covering, we set it to zero and it pops right in place and you can see it doing exactly what we wanted it to in the design. Now at this point, we could still kind of move it around and customize it a little bit if we want to. But the next thing is to figure out how we want this element, our image element, product shot, to kind of behave. It's a little far here, and I think that's because our container it has so much padding on it. So why don't we bring that bottom padding back down a little bit, maybe towards 100. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab this container because that container has that that max width and all of those sizing and layout options placed on it already. I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it right underneath and I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff inside of my container and I'm gonna grab my image and just drag it right into my container. That way you can see we're getting the same behavior. We're gonna get consistency down the left and right hand edge here. I'm gonna grab my image and I'm just gonna say I want this thing to be 100% but I want it to uh, live inside of the container so it's never gonna go more than 1200 pixels. If we press play on our website here, you're gonna see that it does start to stretch, it ebbs and it flows, but it never gets bigger than that 1200 pixel width. So that's looking pretty good, uh, but we do want a little bit of spacing and we can't do that with just an image inside of a framer. So what I like to do is just add it into an auto layout like that. We'll just call this in our layers panel product shot, just like so, and let's give it a little bit of padding. So we'll just go padding on the left and right hand side. Oh, that's the top and bottom. Let's go left and right hand side, maybe 40 on the left and right hand side. And now it'll never shove itself up to that like all the way to the edge of our browser, but it is a fully responsive image. It's still a little bit far away. We don't like that, but let's come back up to our desktop and see what's going on here. So we'll grab that container ends there, and this container is now 
you know, spaced 120 pixels away. So let's bring some of the spacing down here and we'll go maybe more like 40 and 40. And now I'm kind of establishing a consistent spacing for all of our elements you can see here. So um, one thing you're, we're seeing a little bit of is that my background image is being cut off. We could fix that really easily by grabbing the container that it's in and we can set the overflow not to hidden but to visible. When we do that, you'll see now the background image follows and trails all the way down, which is pretty nice. And we're doing so far, we're doing pretty good here. <laughs> we just need to uh, actually create our responsive breakpoints and change a few things up. We could continue to lay this out, but we'll leave that for another video. Let's just focus now on doing some of that responsive work with our layout and our components that we've created. So far, our website is looking great. When we press preview, we get some of that responsive nature, but what we're not getting is any sort of adaptive behavior. That means at a certain point, our website is going to break. This navigation up here at the top, as we start to stretch it down, it doesn't look good, it breaks. And so for that, before things break, we need to add breakpoints. And luckily inside of Framework, that's really, really easy to do. All we have to do is add a new breakpoint with this simple plus button up above. So I'm gonna grab my artboard, I'm gonna hit breakpoint, and it's given me some predefined ones here, like a tablet, a generic tablet size and phone size. But we can also add custom ones. Let's just start with tablet and let's see what it does. It's gonna add our tablet size directly next to it. And what we can do is we can grab certain elements and start to rearrange them and everything washes downhill inside of Framer. That means if I was to you know, remove this product image, it's gonna remove it on all of my artboards. But if I just start on tablet, it's only going to change the elements on its artboard and any smaller breakpoint sizes beneath it. That means that we might actually have a own breakpoint. So why don't we add that one there? So you can see things are starting to break pretty heavily here. We're going to go ahead and fix that. Why don't we grab this element and just say we don't want our height to be that kicked out at all, right? So pretty heavy this size. Why don't we bring this in and the height there, the height is fixed on our product shot. So what we need to do is we actually need to grab our product shot here, change it from a fixed height and just say fit content. That's gonna kind of bring the content up. And you'll notice that it came up everywhere. It applied across all of my different artboards, which is great. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna change this navigation. And you'll notice we have a component with different variants that were set up. So why don't we just change to our phone variant to make it really, really easy. And maybe stretch that down and change the size of it. It feels pretty good and this one has also applied those changes so now when we go to preview our design you'll notice that adaptive work is happening i'm going to hit a breakpoint it's going to slam over to those smaller sizes or the different components and it's going to do the same thing when we get down here now we're still seeing some breakage with our typography it's a little too big maybe we want to change and you know remove some things and really customize we can do that so for instance why don't we grab our element here and just remove some of the padding. We'll move up to something like 60 pixels of padding and I'll reduce the padding on mobile as well. That's gonna look a little bit better. And we also have a huge problem with this typography. Now, luckily, Framer has this really cool feature that allows you to take the same type style and apply the mobile and the tablet versions, different sizes for these. So we can come over to assets and I'm just gonna head over to heading one click on it and we get this whole edit interface. And one of the things you'll see here is we get breakpoints. Its current size is set to 64 everywhere, but by adding a breakpoint, now all of a sudden we have large at 64, we have medium at 51 and small at 41. It's gone ahead and assumed some of the sizes for you and look how instantly it's changed across our breakpoints. Why don't we select medium really quickly and we'll just kind of re-edit. I'm gonna pump that back up to maybe like 54 and let's reduce the line height a little bit to something like 60. Let's jump over to small. We're gonna do the same, same thing. We'll shrink it down a little bit more to 38. And we are definitely going to reduce the line height for that one also. So that looks way better. Um, and we can now adjust the spacing for our elements in here because this one looks pretty good. Our tablet looks pretty good. It's just our mobile that's starting to act a little bit funky. So why don't we come into our 
container here and we want to increase the gap. So I'm going to increase the gap for my elements and I'm going to add a little bit of padding on the left and the right hand side. That's going to keep things right in the middle there looking really, really nice. And if we want, we can also, why don't we just really quickly, I'm going to grab my background image everywhere and I'm going to command L lock it. That way I don't have to mess with it anymore and that affected it everywhere. I'm gonna grab my buttons and I'm gonna change the direction of the button group to be this way. And I'll grab each of the buttons and make sure that they fill. And let's grab the button group itself and make sure that it fills as well. And now we've just kicked that over to more of a mobile layout. That feels pretty good. Let's take a look at our final preview that we have here, a fully responsive website. And as we start to move in, we get responsive nature and we get adaptive behavior as well. Down to our mobile, we have this fully responsive navigation at the top that we customized. And now the only thing that's left to do is to add a little bit of interactivity and animation to bring the whole thing to life. So let's jump back in because that's easy to do in Framer as well. I'm going to start doing some entrance animations here and then maybe we'll do a scroll animation on our main product shot. So let me just zoom in and I'll grab this chip element. All of this is going to take place in the effects panel. So I'm going to grab the effects panel. I'm just going to do an appear effect and we could do a fade in or we could do maybe something like slide in from the bottom. Yeah, let's do a simple fade in and we'll change the effect. Let me just drag this element up. Notice how it made it go blank or just disappear. That's showing us the entrance state or the state it's going to be in on load. And then we're going to dictate where it goes. So we basically just want to bring it down about 20 pixels and it's going to start at zero opacity and fade up and then just like in figma we can change the easing and the timing let's set this to a half second kind of animation here that looks pretty good we will zoom out press play and it's going the wrong way so let's fix that really quickly uh why don't we do here and we'll go down the other way there we go let's try that now there we go, it's gonna fade in and up. Very nice, very simple. And the great news is, if we want all of these to do something similar, we can right click and we can go to copy the effect, we can grab our text, and we can just paste that effect like so, and it applies it right there. And then I like to just go in and customize it a little bit. And why don't we add to our easing and timing just a little bit of a delay, maybe a 0.2 second delay on that one, perfect. We'll do the same thing here. We will paste the effect. We'll go in and edit the easing and timing. And this one will have a 0.4 second delay. And then our button group, we could do the buttons individually if we wanted, but we'll just grab both buttons and we'll do the same thing. We'll paste the effects there and we'll edit it, customize it, change the easing and timing and just give this one maybe a 0.6 delay. Now, when we zoom out, we'll go ahead and just press play on our prototype. We get a nice, animation on all of those and that's pretty cool now the next thing we need to do is just add a little bit of a scroll animation we'll just turn on an effect and we'll give us a scroll transform i think that could be a fun one so what we're going to say here is on scroll we want something to happen we want it to move from in opacity now let's not change the opacity and let's not change the scale of it too much this will be the starting place let's use some 3d transform here and we will maybe translate it back 15 pixels and we'll offset it down maybe 15 pixels 15 and 15 that works for us and then it's going to end up with all of that stuff back to normal and we can add a little bit of a springing effect to it if we wanted to we don't have to let's try that we'll press play on a prototype there's our website and as we start to scroll get a little bit of 3d transition to our product shot and again that's how simple that is to do. Well, that's it. That's how easy it is to design and build websites inside of Framer. If I wanted to launch this website, all I'd have to do is hit that blue publish button and this website becomes a reality. So I highly encourage you to check out Framer. It's one of my favorite no-code tools right now. And there's a bunch of helpful links down in the description, other lessons, things you could learn about Framer, as well as a link to go sign up for a free Framer account and get started. Check all of that out. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments. I would love to answer them. I love talking about Framer. So hit me up and I'll try to answer you as soon as I can. And I hope that you're enjoying this video. And if you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you know when more Framer content comes out. I hope you're having an amazing week, designing amazing things, making amazing things and crushing your website process.